who contacted you and I want to say thank you to both of them so they know themselves. What is the relationship between you and Fermi that every time I see that uh, you are in the same direction? He is very brave. He is urbane. He is polished and very erudite. He is a scholar and a conscientious one at that. You know, in Nigeria, you have scholars, people who just study for the sake of it, people who just read for the sake of it. He practicalizes what he understands to be humanity. And that is why I love him, I respect him, and I call him a brother. He, he epitomizes what any intellectual should aspire to be. You intellectualize that is very true or very good, and then you must have a human side to yourself. He is de-tribalized, as you well know, and I'm sure that in time to come, he will have a very great role to play, if not in Ududuwa, but also in Biafra. If Biafra were to come tomorrow, I would take him. And I'm sure that he will have a lot to contribute in making Biafra a better place for everybody to be in. So I have not only love for him, but also have regard for him. Now, I'm sure you are aware that there are efforts to start a movement that will bring uh, the Yorubas and the Igbos together and closer. Are you willing to play a major role in that union? Yes, we are doing ours on the ground. You saw the protest on the 1st of October right across the world, Yoruba One Voice and IPOB. So we are doing ours. That was why I categorically stated, and without any equivocation, that the bond between the Yorubas and the Igbos can no longer be broken by anybody. They will try, but they will fail. It can't be broken anymore. So I am more than willing and able to serve in whatever capacity that is required of me to make sure that these two great nations pilot the affairs of black people in Africa going forward. Because without them, Africa is doomed, more or less. Now, I will plead with you to take the next question very softly. Uh, because as a Christian, I believe my faith teaches me to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. So which means I respect constituted authority. My question yes. is about your best friend, our president and commander. Now, you propounded this theory of a cloned man, and that our current president is a Sudanese man called Jibril. Do you agree that your information might have been wrong, and you are also willing to apologize to him for that error? Anybody can make a mistake. No, not at all. Buhari is dead and buried in a shallow grave in Saudi Arabia. Aisha Buhari was there. She came back from what they call the lesser heart. She was wearing black. She was mourning. If you look at the pictures that were circulated at that, at that point in time, you will see the smog, or should I say, the forlorn faces of northern governors. A minute silence was held at the AU for a late Buhari. Even Her Britannic Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, also penned a condolence message to the people of Nigeria before the cabal took over and asked her to rescind it, which she did. Buhari is dead, and I'm prepared to stake Biafra on it. If you, Dele Momodu, can go and prove to me, I'm not asking you to do anything too complex. If you can go and ask this man you call Buhari, whoever it is in Asarok, to come outside, don't do very much, address a panel of Nigerian youths, maybe 20 of them, and speak Buhari's mother tongue, which is Fufude. I will give up Biafra, 
I will apologize to him and I will submit myself to any authority on this earth to do with me as they please. There is no Buhari. Jubril was there. Jubril followed Abba Kiari to Cuba and ran away from there and never came back. The man you have now in Asarok is from Niger Republic. His name is Yusuf Abubakar Muhammad. That's his name. Yusuf Abubakar Muhammad. Even Shekau knows who he is personally and was mentioning his name as well. It is not Buhari. The, the old Buhari that you and I know, the country cannot be burning and he will restrict himself to only 12 minutes of edited broadcast. Impossible. Impossible. Anybody that knows Buhari, even if he's dying, he must speak because he fought in his own understanding to keep Nigeria warm. Anything that impacts or threatens the territory, the territorial um, um, cohesion and integrity of Nigeria, the old Buhari, will, in fact, will be in Lagos. The old Buhari will be in Lagos, I'm telling you. But this little, have you not seen him with his fresh hands? Hands of a 35-year-old. He cannot wear this. He cannot wear this. Because if he wears this, his ear will bend. Because he's rubber. Silicon. We know about AI technology. It's deep fake. Please Google it. You're a media man, you must know this. By ethnicity, where they wish to belong. If they say we want to be part of the Janja with North, we are once in a while, you lose your daughter, your wife could be raped. Oh, well, I'm good. We let them go. I am a Democrat. I'm not going to force anybody to do anything. And Biafra must come via a referendum. People must agree to it. We are not forcing anyone to do anything. Everything we are saying and doing is geared towards one outcome. A referendum. If they agree, fine. If they don't agree. So who is going to organize this referendum that you've been talking about? The United Nations will have to organize it at the right but time. They will. If it is not organized, what is your plan B? We continue with civil unrest and civil disobedience, boycott of elections. As one of our great heroes said, we will boycott all boycottables until we get what we want. The British never wanted to leave Africa, but they did. The Russia never wanted the Soviet Union to break up, but it did. Serbia never wanted Yugoslavia to break up, but it did. Sudan never wanted South Sudan. They never wanted South Sudan to be free. They're free today. Ethiopia never wanted, <coughs> excuse me, Eritrea to be free, but today Eritrea is free. So that tells you all you need to know. It is not in their hands because you know what? Power belongs to the people. Anything we want is what we are going to get. Once again, I want to ask this. Do you think this dream is realizable without a war? And are you prepared to fight another war? This dream can be realized without a war. And let me put it this way. As soon as the people, the various ethnic groups in Nigeria realize what Nigeria means to each and every ethnic group, they will subscribe to our position. So it is realizable without a war. Before the white man came, let me ask you this, because it's an interview, which means you can ask me, because I can ask you. Before the white man came, was there any Nigeria? Before the white man came, did Nigeria exist? It's a simple question that I'm asking you. Dele, did Nigeria exist before? It didn't, no. It didn't exist. Then why are African people, black people dying over something that they did not create? Did any Yoruba man create Nigeria? The answer is no. No Yoruba man created Nigeria. No Hausa man did. No Fulani man did. No Kanodi man did. No Jukun man did. When you come to Nigeria, it's always a debate about it is our turn. It is our turn. It is our turn to rule. Now, there are over 250 main ethnic groups in Nigeria. If you keep rotating the presidency every eight years to each and every ethnic group, times eight by 250. How many years are you going to get? So some people will die many times over. They will reincarnate many times over. The presidency hasn't come to them. Nigeria is a joke and an absolute mess.
it was not created by black people, therefore it cannot be sustained by black people. I want to see an Africa where a Yoruba nation, a Yoruba mega nation extends from Togo all the way to Edo State. That's what I want. Thank you.